In our lessons for this morning, which I would be happy to read to you if I had remembered to bring my bulletin, but I didn't. I'm going to borrow one. Our first lesson is from the book of Habakkuk. Part of scripture we don't normally read in church. It's a very short book. And this morning in the lesson, the prophet cries out to God in despair and wants to know why God has not responded to his prayers. Now, if you're like me, you've probably been through circumstances like that where you have faced some kind of challenge and you wonder, where is God? Habakkuk gets his answer from God. And God says to him, I will be here with you. I will protect you. And I will defend you. From the book of Habakkuk, chapter 1, beginning at verse 1. The oracle that Habakkuk the prophet received, How long, O Lord, must I call for help? But you do not listen. Or cry out to you, Violence! But you do not save. Why do you make me look at injustice? Why do you tolerate wrong? Destruction and violence are before me. There is strife and conflict abounds. Therefore the law is paralyzed and justice never prevails. The wicked hem in the righteous so that justice is perverted. I will stand at my watch and station myself on the ramparts. I will look to see what he will say to me and what answer I am to give to this complaint. Then the Lord replied, Write down the revelation and make it plain on tablets so that a herald may run with it. For the revelation awaits an appointed time. It speaks of the end and will not prove false. Though it linger, wait for it. You will certainly come and not delay. See, he is puffed up. His desires are not upright, but the righteous will live by his faith. Here ends our first lesson. In our psalm for this morning, we again have a message of hope and confidence that God will be with us, God will sustain us, and therefore we can praise God for his glorious works. Turn to page 232 in the front of the hymnals. We're going to read Psalm 36. Let's read it responsibly. I'll read the odd number verses. You read the even number verses. Page 232, Psalm 36. There is a voice of rebellion deep in the heart of the wicked. There is no fear of God before his eyes. He flatters himself in his own eyes, that his hateful sin will not be found out. The words of his mouth are wicked and deceitful. He has left off acting wisely and doing good. He thinks of wickedness upon his bed, and has set himself in no good way. He does not abhor that which is evil. Your love, O Lord, reaches to the heavens, and your faithfulness to the clouds. Your righteousness is like the strong mountains. Your justice like the great deep. You save both man and beast, O Lord. How priceless is your love, O God. Your people take refuge under the shadow of your wings. They feast upon the abundance of your house. You give them drink from the river of your delights. For with you is the well of life. And in your light we see light. Examine our loving kindness to those who know you, and your favor to those who are true of heart. Let not the foot of the proud come near me, nor the hand of the wicked push me aside. See how they are fallen, those who work wickedness. They are cast down and shall not be able to rise. The Apostle Paul touched many lives during his ministry but probably none more profoundly than the young man, Timothy. Timothy was both his friend, his companion, and his protege. And so, later on in Paul's ministry, as he lies in prison, he writes to Timothy, 
and he speaks of the love that he has for him. In our second lesson for today, Paul is writing to Timothy, and he has him reflect back on how Timothy first became a Christian. Now, I've told you before that probably one of my earliest memories is Sunday school. Because my mom taught the itty bitty class. And you didn't avoid church in our house. <laughs> you went. And you liked it because mom said so. <laughs> but it was from my mom that I first learned about Jesus. And in the lesson, you're going to hear that Timothy is no different from his grandmother and his mother, Eunice and Lois. He first heard the message of faith. And now Paul is writing to him and encouraging him to keep that faith. Not an easy thing to do in a difficult world. From Paul's second letter to Timothy, chapter 1, verses 1 through 14. St. Paul writes, Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, for the sake of the promise of life that is in Christ Jesus, to Timothy, my beloved child, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. I am grateful to God, whom I worship with a clear conscience as your ancestors did, when I remember you constantly in my prayers, night and day. Recalling your tears, I long to see you, that I may be filled with joy. I am reminded of your sincere faith, a faith that lived first in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and now I am sure lives in you. For this reason I remind you to rekindle the gift of God that is within you through the laying on of my hands. For God did not give you a spirit of cowardice, but rather a spirit of power and of love and of self-discipline. Do not be ashamed then of the testimony about our Lord or of me, his prisoner, but join with me in suffering for the gospel, relying on the power of God, who saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace. This grace was given to us in Christ Jesus before the ages began, but it has now been revealed through the appearing of our Savior, Christ Jesus, who abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. For this gospel, I was appointed a herald and an apostle and a teacher. And for this reason, I suffer as I do. But I am not ashamed, for I know the one in whom I have put my trust. And I am sure that he is able to guard until that day what I have entrusted to him. Hold to the standard of sound teaching that you have heard from me in your faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. Guard the good treasure entrusted to you with the help of the Holy Spirit living in us. Here is the second lesson. From time to time in my ministry, I have been confronted by someone going through a time of crisis, a time of challenge. And oftentimes they've said to me, Pastor, I think I no longer have faith in God. Now, the fact of the matter is, if you can ask that question, you still have faith. But oftentimes our challenge is not having faith, but where we place it. And in our gospel lesson for this morning, the disciples asked Jesus to increase their faith. And he speaks to them about the amazing things that could be done with just the tiniest amount of faith and trust in God. Now granted, we're not going to make plans to go out and uh, uproot a tree and cast it into the sea. Okay, we don't test God that way. But Jesus' message to us is that a little bit of faith can get us through the toughest of times. We rise to the good news of the gospel. This is the Gospel according to Luke, the 17th chapter, beginning at the 5th verse. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Lord. 
The apostles said to the Lord, Increase our faith. The Lord replied, If you had faith the size of a mustard seed, you would be able to say to this mulberry tree, Be uprooted and planted in the sea, and it would obey you. Who among you would say to your slave, who has just come in from plowing and tending sheep in the field, come here at once and take your place at the table? Would you not rather say to him, prepare supper for me, put on your apron and serve me while I eat and drink? Later, you may eat and drink. Do you thank the slave for doing what was commanded? So you also, when you have done all that you were ordered to do, say, we are worthless slaves. We have only done what we ought to have done. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Please be seated. <clears throat> 